Greetings, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome to the Daily Affection with Brother James. I am delighted to be here one more time and share with you what the Lord has put on my heart today. Praise Jesus. And so, going straight to the reality of God series. We have been studying, you know, through scriptures and me teaching you how you contemplate, how you sit and give your time to the word and the word gives, gives itself to you. Uh, there is no magic. Previously I say there is no magic. There is no shortcut. There is no formula. There is no other manual you can use except sitting and give yourself to the word and the word gives himself to you. Praise Jesus. So welcome to this today's teaching. Father, in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for your love and grace. We thank you for this time and moment and opportunity we have in you, Lord, that we may declare your grace, that we may declare the good news of salvation. Father, as I stand right now to speak your word, words be given to me. Words be given to me, Lord. I stand to declare thy word and thy truth, my Lord. Let words flow freely from my mouth and let them receive with tenderness and gladness and eagerness. May they, O oh Lord, and bless the word. The word of truth that brings joy, peace, and harmony in their lives. A word that brings every single good blessing the Lord has placed in the word. I declare love for the word. I declare that they may love the word just as you have loved them, my Lord. Let every day of their lives, O oh Lord, be a day to be in the word. Let no moment of their lives Pass without thinking about your word, my Lord. Father, today, let it be the day that you destined for this person who is watching right now to break through and break that yoke of laziness that they may rejoice in your word. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. And so, brothers and sisters, Today, before I get into the teaching of today, the reality of God, day four, day four, day five, I don't remember. That day, that one. Today is day four, I think, yeah. So, uh, I want you to understand this. Uh, I say previously, you cannot understand the word. You cannot inter rightly interpret the word when you don't have a background. A background is... Uh, uh, an interpretation already. Like I said previously, in the previous teaching, I said, when the word of God is full in you, when the word of God finally becomes full to a level that you can release it like I released it, to a level that you can go to Genesis and begin to see Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, Genesis 1.2, 1, Genesis 1.3, Genesis 1.4, Genesis 1.5, Genesis 1.6. And as I say that, I can quote it. I say this, today no quoting, I want to just go straight. But I want you to understand that when you think about Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, what comes to your mind? Do you have it already? And do you have the understanding of Genesis 1.1? 1, 1? It's foolishness to the people of the world that you memorize the word. I know you know John 3.16. But do you understand John 3.16? Because it's not about knowledge. It's about the understanding of the knowledge. The right interpretation of the scriptures. The right understanding. Not the understanding that Jesus, yes, died on the cross that we may have life. What does it mean to you? What does it mean, Jesus, to die for you? What does it mean, Jesus, to give you life? What does it mean, Jesus, not to condemn you, but to love you? What does it mean? The Bible says, God so loved the world. Okay. You, do you understand what is that world? 
Sometimes today, believers quote that word, for God so loved the world, and he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And then they still apply that scripture to themselves. That's not you anymore if you believed. But then, it's still beneficial to you to understand it because the more you understand, you go back to when you were a sinner and you begin to interpret rightly when you were a sinner, God loved you. And then, okay, so what does it mean to me? God to love me and give himself for me. Him to put himself on the line. Him to be my sacrifice. Him to be my sin. Him to be my curse. Previously, I told you, I interpreted to you a little bit, uh, Galatians 3.13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. <laughs> Christ became your curse. In the teaching, I actually say Christ became your problem so that you may not have problems. That even when you are in the midst of a problem, the problem don't have power over you, but you have the power over the problems. When you are in a certain crisis, in the midst of a crisis, the crisis does not have a grip on you, but you have all the power and authority over the crisis and does not produce anything like fear or worry or anxiety in you. Because who is in you is greater than the reality itself. Praise Jesus. So let's go straight to Luke. Lucania. Lucania in the Greek. Praise Jesus. Lucania means light giving. Light giving God after Mark. God of war. God of war. Mark. Matilos. Kadivrakinta lida. I don't want to give you a Bible class today. But I want you to understand this, brothers. God gave his son to give light. So from today, say, I believe I am a child of the light. I believe darkness does not have power over me because I myself have become one with the light. And all those are scriptures. They that unite themselves with the Lord they are one in spirit with him. And so if they become one in spirit with him, who he is is who they are. How he lives is how they live. Because he lives, I will face tomorrow. And I'll face now even break now into the most happiest moment of my life. Every moment of your life, it must be. Be a happy moment because God has given it for you to be glad and rejoice every day, every moment of your life. Command every single thing, every reality before you and speak to it until it abides to your reality in mind. You see, when you declare these words that I'm speaking, when you speak the words of the Bible, let me tell you, the beginning is so challenging. Like suppose you have a you you have you suppose you are sick, and then you say in the name of Jesus I am healed. In the name of Jesus my body is perfect. In the name of Jesus I am whole. In the name of Jesus my body is pure and perfect, without blemish, without disease and illness. In the name of Jesus no weakness, no infirmity found in my body. And you speak all these things and nothing changes. The more you speak it, the more pain. And you're like, devil away from me. It has happened to me where my body is so ill and I feel like, eh. I listen to this. Ill in a sense like I'm dizzy, I'm just a, And I speak, it doesn't go. I speak, it doesn't go. I speak, it doesn't go. There was a time because I love walk so much and because of the walk, you know, night walks and, you know, declaring stuff, it came a time where I began to have, you know, some, you know, backache and, and I, I would feel my body my pain. I declare stuff, it doesn't go. I declare it doesn't go. I reached a point I was like, Lord, why is, am I declaring things don't change? Why, why am I? God said, keep speaking, it's okay. I kept speaking. I kept speaking. And I, the more I speak, and the devil said, go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. I'm like, 
yeah, I can go to the doctor still. I'm, I'm still okay because doctors, God has given them the wisdom. Still, I can still go there, but I will be healed, devil. I would resist for some mo moment and suddenly boom, healed. What does it mean? It means persevere in the word, not persevere in thinking about those things. Persist in the word, not persisting in thinking about those things. Rather battle to speak the word than to battle thinking about the problem. Praise Jesus. And so, let's go to Luke. Chapter 4. Praise the Lord Jesus. And verse... Seventeen and eighteen. The Bible says, "The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, just as the scripture were handed to you." Here it is, Jesus. Scroll of the Isaiah, the prophet, given to him. And lowly it, I pray that you unlaw the word. <laughs> And lolling it, he found the place where it was written. <laughs> it had been written of him. And so it is written of you. Here, listen. The spirit of the Lord is on me. The spirit of the Lord is on you. In Acts, the spirit manifested. Brother. In Acts, the Spirit came. Ah, and here the Lord says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Preach the good news to that poor mind. Preach the good news to that ignorant mind. Preach the good news to the poor mind. The poor mind is a part of a human that does not have the knowledge. Some things you know, some things you don't know. So speak to that part of you that doesn't know. Speak these things until it is informed. And the moment your mind is, inf is informed, nothing can change and challenge. The moment your mind perceives these things, nothing can challenge, nothing can change, and nothing can revoke, and nothing. It's done in you. Praise Jesus. And so listen, listen brothers, brothers and sisters. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Freedom for the prisoners. Freedom for the prisoners. Freedom for the prisoners. And you are no longer a prisoner. And recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed. Now listen to this. You were the one who was poor. You were the one who was a prisoner. You were the one who was oppressed. I repeat, you were that person. And when the Lord Jesus finally came on earth, that very day that he was crucified, that very day that he rose again, it was declared that you are free indeed because he who the Son sits free. Do you have that in your conscience? Do you have John 8, 32? Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thou shalt know the truth. Thou shalt know the truth. Thou shalt know the truth. And the truth will set you free. It was declared after he was elected that they that have put their hope in him, that you who have believed in him, set free to a level that you can't understand. And so when a certain challenge is in your life, spiritual or natural, do not say, I am struggling. Do, do, do say always, I am free. And the more you release these things, the more you speak these things, the more you contemplate, the more you release, the more you confess the right words, nor the false, fake information of this world. Suddenly, the life, I always say the life, brothers, 
every good gift that is in the Lord, everything that is in the presence of the word, whatsoever God has destined in Christ his son, because Christ his son is no longer physical, is now spiritual, the only way you can see him is when you see the scroll, is when you open the scroll, open the scroll daily, read your Bible daily, tangible or, you know, you, you have the form, but I always say, Turn off the notifications when you're going to read your Bible because the Lord is going to disturb you. Set some time aside, physical Bible or electronic Bible. And then as you sit, give yourself to these things and think and rethink. And then listen to this. When you see and he was handed the scroll, he was given the scroll and lolling it. Now you too, you were given a gift. The Bible is a gift and the Bible is your manual. The Bible is not just a book. The people of the Old Testament, they had the scrolls and within the scrolls it was written that they that meditate on the word, on the law, the law shall guide their steps. And guess what? It worked for the people of the law. Whoever read the law understood seasons and times. For them, the only blessing they had, it was understanding what the prophet is saying because when they read they understood easily what the language of a prophet when the prophet because they were sinners they were rebellious by default but they that gave themselves to the study of the law when the prophet would speak you're rebellious remember the law was given thousands of thousands of years before the children of Israel are in the land and enjoying the land it is given in the exodus and after it's given the Exodus, a new generation comes that doesn't know about the law. But it was a book given to them. No, Jesus, thousands and thousands of days, to, we don't know because Jesus is the law of God. He came and he fulfilled the law. But do you know what it means, Christ, to fulfill the law on your behalf? Because when he fulfilled the law and you read, what you see is not you to do what you see is you to live. For the people of the Old Testament, what they read, they read what they had to do. And when they failed, at least they read, a prophet would come and say, you are rebellious, repent. They that had read the law, they repented and they were blessed. But the people that never read the law, they never repented because they don't know that if you read, you will be informed. Yes, you will fail, but when a prophet speaks, you will be blessed because you already have a background. I say this. I, I want to repeat this. The people of the Old Testament, in the scrolls, it was the law. They would meditate on the law and they see obedience, obedience. Ten commandments, 613 decrees, laws, precepts, regulations, commandments, command after command. They were slaves of the law. Then, when they would read the scroll, this is what would happen. They would see guilt. They would see fear. They would tremble. When they would sin and the prophet would say, repent, they would easily understand that they have to repent. Next day, they repent, they, they are blessed. But wow, wow to those that never, a curse was upon to those that never read it. So, brothers and sisters, today, when you read your Bible, and next attempt comes, next the law comes, next the world tries to challenge or tries to bring some undesirable situations or conditions or challenges in your life. The word which is alive and active, because to you, there's no guilt, there's no fear, there's no worry. So to you who is filled with the fullness and the wisdom of Christ, Next, because you are informed, what happens is you reverse because you already know. When something comes and you already have a background of how you handle it, you already know what to say, you already know what to do, you already know how to react because it found you ready and grounded. That's why people of the time of the apostles gave themselves to the study of the word so that whenever challenges and trials and temptations and persecutions arose against them, they overcame because... They already, they already had the background and the foundation and they were already flourishing in the word before temptations and trials. So before you go through the day, every day of your life, give yourself to the study of the scrolls. Give yourself to the study of the word. 
And so, brothers and sisters, this Bible is a precious gift, gift given to you. And it is a picture of your life. It is a blueprint of your life. The world says you're cast. The Bible says you're blessed. The world says you're a slave. The Bible says you are free. The world says toil. <laughs> the Bible says you're favored. You know what? Men of this world work for, work for 10 years. They shall come into your life and be fulfilled in, in only a month. <laughs> the world says you're a sinner. It says you're pure and perfect and blameless. No visa verses. The world says you are imperfect. And religion says you are imperfect being needed needs that needs to be perfected by the perfect being of Jesus Christ of the cross. And no, you are perfect. And so, brothers and sisters, have you opened the scroll daily? Open it. It shall open doors of heaven and you shall flourish over what the Bible says is what prevails and they that are in the Bible they that are opening the scrolls they live what the Bible what the scrolls say not what the situations and the conditions say you know problems have a language situations have a language and they speak so much in here than out there when someone is going through pain severe pain someone out there when you see, you see, yeah, they are in pain. But you don't understand it. It's until you go through what the person is going through, then you can understand what pain is. But guess what? When you are in this word, when you're conscious of this word, what the situation is saying outside in your life, I mean, you're lacking, I mean, you're struggling naturally in here. Because here you are 245. That's what it means to be in Christ. Welcome to the next reality teaching of God. God is on your side. He's working out everything on your behalf. Now and forever, His word will be alive and active. It will dwell so much on what the world says. Stink and keep and pay attention to what the Bible says. And what the Bible says will open your eyes. And so shall it be in your life. Praise Jesus. See you on the other side.